Hey, welcome to another episode of Making Billions. I'm your host, Ryan Miller, and today we've got a special guest, Ben Reinberg. Now, Ben, he is the founder and CEO of Alliance Consolidated Group of Companies. This is a commercial real estate fund that has assets under management north of $500 million. Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you. So, so Ben, you started Alliance around uh, 1994. Is that right? That's correct. So talk about uh, where it all started for you and how did you, you know, I'd really, I think our listeners really want to know, how did you go from this young Ben Reinberg that's full of hustle and ready to conquer the world to this $500 million real estate fund that's continually uh, growing at this pace? So talk about where it all started and, and bring us up to speed of how did you even get in this industry? Uh, I'm a CPA by background. Uh, one of our clients at a firm I was working at introduced me to commercial real estate. He thought I was more entrepreneurial. I've always been an entrepreneur since I was born and I knew I was, and I was looking for a way to start a business. And at that time, the internet wasn't prevalent. There weren't a lot of resources to figure out how to start a business. And this gentleman helped me. So what I did was I, I found my first deal. Uh, it was an industrial deal. I put it together, syndicated it. And ever since that, I've been running ever since. So we've built over nine and a half million square feet of industrial and office. Mm -hmm. And then uh, about, I would say eight years after that, we got into medical office and veterinarian office. And so we've owned anywhere from industrial office, general office, medical office, uh, retail. We've done all the different food groups uh, <laughs> in commercial real estate, uh, except for multifamily. We've owned a little bit of multifamily. But, so now we focus on medical properties throughout the United States. That's what our funds invest in. And uh, that's a large part of our portfolio. Wow. So out of all of those different flavors of real estate, what made you decide to pick that particular blend of assets? Well, in Chicago has a big industrial market and office market. And that's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born and raised. And that's where I started my career. When I was younger, it was a, it was a local slash regional business. You would invest in the Midwest when you lived in the Midwest. And then years down the road, it became a national and then a global business. So a lot of our assets are even outside the Midwest. We mm -hmm. invest mostly in the South and Southeast, Southwest, Mountain West and West Coast of the United States where there's population growth. And I would say 17 years ago, we got into medical office and we realized that medical office is pandemic and recession proof. Mm -hmm. So we decided to focus on that niche and it's been an incredible run for us ever since. That's incredible. So here we are, young Ben getting his CPA. Um, and how do you go from choosing CPA in life? And, and probably that route is maybe where it originally started. I'll, I'll let you fill in the blanks here. Um, how, do you, how do you make the leap from a working professional, a CPA, um, in, into commercial real estate that's recession uh, proof, how do how do we go from there to to real estate? I think it starts, you know, if I were a younger Ben, it starts with persistence. Mm -hmm. It starts with your mindset. You really have to uh, really become the part, so to speak. Okay. You know, there's a saying called "fake it before you make yeah. it." Right? Yeah. Right. You're a young guy. You're trying to buy a piece of real estate. You're trying to syndicate. You have to portray yourself with confidence. And when I was younger, I learned that I had nothing to lose. What would be the worst thing would happen? So if I failed, what would happen? Yeah. Okay, I'm back to where I am anyways. Right. So you have to be fearless. You can't be afraid to fail. You have to take the risk. Yeah. And at that time, without the internet and knowledge, it was a lot of shoe leather. Yeah. I, you know, when I had to raise equity, I had to go out and hustle and talk to friends and in different contexts. I know that I built for a short period of time. I was young 
And that was a challenge, too, because I was young. I had to go over the fact that people thought I was young and inexperienced, too. <laughs> so it took it took extra time. I worked long hours. I was in a lot of meetings mm -hmm. and I believed in myself and I and I did my first deal and I was able to get a loan from a, uh, who was my godfather at the time from a bank. I had no no basis to get that loan. I didn't have a balance sheet. <laughs> God forbid I defaulted what would happen. They yeah. would just take back the property and I would walk away because it wouldn't be able to get anything. I had nothing yeah. at the time. And so we did our first deal and it was an interesting deal. And it was a deal that taught me a lot of lessons. Every deal we do, you learn something or abundance of information every single day. It doesn't matter if I'm in the prime of my career right now. It doesn't matter if I'm a 24-year-old Ben Reinberg. So for all your listeners out there, it's it's you have to keep learning. Yeah. And you have to pull the trigger and not be worried about fear or failing. Yeah. And it's okay. You're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes. It's a complicated business. Yeah. There's a lot of variables. Uh, you need to become what I call resource rich. One of the things that I pride myself on is I have a lot of resources. Yeah. I don't have all the knowledge in the world and I don't claim to, but what I'm outstanding at my company is we'll bring in the right resources to support things that complement our business and help us. I love that. And when I was younger, I was able to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So I was able to close the deal. This first deal, it was an industrial deal. Yeah. It was a two tenant industrial deal. The first week, right after we bought it, we lost a tenant, which was 45% of the rental income <laughs> for the building. I was young. Yeah. I signed with recourse on the loan. Mm -hmm. So if you want to talk about being thrown in the water and the deep water <laughs> and trying to figure out how to get out, you had to do that. Yeah. That's why I do. And that experience, what we ended up doing was it became a three tenant building. We sold it for like a three X, four X multiple at the time, which was a huge return. And that kind of launched me and it made me become the person that I am today. And I'm still that same person that started when I was 24. I still yeah. work hard. I hustle. I don't forget the day I started. And I'm very grateful. And I'm grateful for the resources, my employees that we have at Alliance. Yeah. I'm grateful for all our investors. And that carries through today to our business. And it carries through how we manage and between treating the people we do business with and our resources and employees and everyone around the country that works for us, it kind of just carries down the river simultaneously. So uh, I would say to anyone in your audience that, you know, just get started yeah. and don't worry about whether you can do something or not, you'll find the resources. And I can tell you something sure. is that, and I don't care what anyone says out there, if you find the right deal, yeah. you'll find the capital and you'll fill your capital stack. That could be debt or equity, uh, or if you're raising all equity for a deal. Mm -hmm. And once you do your first deal, you'll you'll basically break that ceiling yeah. of like, okay, I can do this. Right. I know how it works. I know some of the nuances. And, every, and I've done hundreds of yeah. deals in my career. Yeah. And every deal, you get better and better. You say, okay, I learned from that. What I learned from that? Okay, well, I'm not going to do that. Or we did that really well. Let's let's incorporate that going forward. It, it happens every every week. Every time we're doing something, something pops up. And and this business that I've learned, and because I have a lot of investors from around the country, investors that have made hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. And some of them made it quickly, mm -hmm. either through trading, you know, on the Mercantile Exchange or Board of Trade in Chicago selling their businesses hmm. and our business is a lot different. It's, it's what I call a marathon business. Yeah. And for the folks out there that are listening, if you understand it's a marathon business, you're always building blocks over time. Right. And if you treat it like a marathon business, you will be wildly successful Yeah. because what wraps around that thought process is persistence, focus, caring about people, hmm. treating people right, having integrity, yeah being transparent, being consistent yeah. and working on yourself to become the expert that you need to be in the focus you're at and find a niche and focus on it. And we decided to focus on medical office, which at a time when we started, people thought we were crazy because yeah. 
in the United States, they didn't know what the laws were going to be like. You know, what's Medicaid, Medicare going to be around? Yep. Uh, what's health insurance going to be like in the United States? So there was a lot of there was a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty about healthcare. Mm -hmm. But we always felt, and I live by this saying, the human body is never going out of stock, yeah. and it never will. <laughs> That's a good. good and deal. if you think about that one little nugget that I just said, yeah. think about what comes out of it. Well, stability in your tenants, they yeah. build roots there. Their patients, which are all of us, go to the doctor. Yeah, keep coming back. Wow. And so it's pandemic and recession proof, and I love it. Yeah. And that's that's my niche. And and I and I and my employees, I've become experts at it. Yep. And we have and we're a leader in the business and we've been very fortunate. Yeah. And so I didn't get there. I didn't get here overnight. It's a process. Yeah. It's a marathon business. It's showing up. OK, it's it's having integrity. It's working hard. And at the time when I was younger, it was all shoe leather. Yeah. You know, it was mailing FedEx, not sending a PDF like it is. So now it's real advantageous. I would love to be a 24 year old guy <laughs> now in the business. Yeah. And it's because I think I would accelerate the deals I could do. I could buy in different markets that I wasn't able to when I was younger. Yeah. So there's some real advantages and it's exciting. You can raise equity online if you do it right. Yeah. Some of the things we're doing now. So mm -hmm. uh, there's real advantages to being young and especially with social media and the, and the internet, there's a lot of knowledge that you can obtain out there if you spend the time and do it. So that's awesome, and and thank you for explaining that. Gosh, I mean that's that's a deep well. There's a lot of stuff we can go uh, with that. Now, one of the things um, that I'm wondering, and and maybe many of the, our listeners are as well, is you've you've been doing this since you're 24, um, so mm -hmm. you've been been doing it for a few years now we'll say and from your experience um now looking at l let's dive deeper because you've done hundreds of deals you said and and you've 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 had uh partners limited partners investors who've made hundreds of millions of dollars and so from your experience maybe talk about when you're piecing a deal together let's 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 bring our listeners to actually doing a deal there's a lot of money on the line a lot of opportunity and maybe a lot of fun sometimes Dare I say a deal can be fun, but mm -hmm. in, in your experience, Ben, um, what are some of the reasons that would make a real estate deal fall apart? So what are, what are some of those things that you said you made a lot of mistakes and, and now you're, uh, you know, a lot wiser because of it. Looking back to your 20, 24 year old self and up to today, what were some of those things that you wish you knew that would probably help our listeners understand when doing a deal? this is probably the stuff you should avoid or you should double down on. Walk us through that. Well, I if you're going to get financing, let's start with that. Sure. Because that's always something that people don't know how to deal with. Yeah. What I do is I like to have control. Yeah. I'm a big control freak. And the reason why is because I make sure that acquisition gets over the finish line. Right. And now I have a lot of people involved. They kind of shepherd the deal through. But right. When I'm starting out, I'm, I'm giving an example is that you want to vet and interview your lenders. I would start with local community and regional banks if I was younger. Okay. And the reason why is you have more control. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to a life insurance company or CMBS type loans or that type of debt, it's more complicated. Yeah. So you want to simplify the process as much as possible, especially when you're starting out. And by doing that, you want to find out from the bank What's their decision process? Mm -hmm. Everyone forgets to ask that. Yeah, I, it's like the first thing out of my mouth. I love that. Okay, I am literally interviewing the bank every time we do a deal. We bring on a new lender, and it's re it's religious for me. It's because I don't want eleventh hour changes. Okay, and we'll get into what that really means. So I qualify the bank. I find out their decision process. I find out who's making the decisions. Is it? Two signatures, one person does they have to go to a loan committee, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then I get into pretending that I sit on their decision process board, whether it's a committee or the uh, chief underwriting officer, chief credit officer for the deal. I figure out how do they underwrite? Mm -hmm. 
and I, I ask questions. What's the debt service coverage? Yep. You know, uh, what type of loan to values are you looking for? Uh, what are your rates? What are your amortization schedules? So I know exactly what that lender is and will do. And I make a decision. Am I comfortable? Are they going to be able to close the deal? Is this a long-term relationship? Yeah. And I might have three or four of those situations going on simultaneously. And I pick the best one. The most important thing about financing is, can they live up to their word? Mm. Do they have integrity? Are they transparent to you? Because if they're not, they're not a good fit. And so you have to make sure that the lender's a good fit. And that there's a real art to it. It takes a lot of experience over time to figure out how a lender's a good fit and how to get the best financing. So that's one of the pitfalls that people deal with is get is going into a deal, they spent all this money, they don't qualify the lender, they don't know the decision process. And next thing you know, lender says, eh, we decide we're not gonna do yeah. the deal. Or we offered you this, but we're not gonna live up to the terms we offered you. So now all of a sudden you're out there raising money and it changes your yields. Yeah. Maybe you have to raise more money. And I've been through that. Yeah. I've been through that a bunch of times when I was younger. And I learned and I said, okay, I have to pin down the lender and tell them, hey, I'm syndicating this deal. Right. Uh, I can't have 11th hour changes. So go right now. I'm going to give you all the information you need okay. to make a decision. Go vet it. Go tell me exactly what you guys can do because I can't have 11th hour changes. Right. And that's really important. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that most people don't know is how to package a deal. Yeah. Packaging is so, is so critical to your investors and, and your whole capital stack, your lender, your, your investors, et cetera. And that could be to anyone you talk to. And you have to become the expert in that deal. You have to know your market. You have to know the real estate fundamentals. Uh, you need to understand exactly why you're doing that deal. Right. What's your strategy? What's the plan? And when you can tell the story, yes. what I call the story, it makes it a lot easier to put your capital stack together. So to the lender, it's maybe you're sending them, you're sending them uh, a pro forma of numbers, a financial analysis to be able to help them get to their debt service coverage. You know, I might put together numbers and show the lender and say, see, you're looking for a 135 debt service. I got a one nine. Yeah. Okay, this is a no brainer. And this is based off my terms. Yeah. So I always dictate my terms. Right. Now, when you're younger, it could be a little bit different. But if you go in and frame your terms, that's a real good thing to do when you're younger. That's or in any, in any loan you're grabbing, frame exactly what you want. Tell them what you want. Tell them how you're doing it and come up with a plan, which is extremely important. That's The that's next great. thing is really important is looking at your due diligence items that can cause issues. For example, your environmental. Mm -hmm. Everyone forgets this. Yeah. You know, am I buying a property next to a gas station? Is there any environmental issues? Were there any past environmental issues? I asked every seller yeah. that we do business with was, is there any environmental issues? Because if there is, usually generally speaking, I'm not getting involved. Right. I, I don't want to have to start doing borings and start getting into soil testing. And then how do I sell the deal? You know, what's my exit? And you have to prepare for your exit, too, when you buy it. So environmental, understanding your lender, uh, understanding your numbers so you can present it to anyone. The other pitfall is understanding title, which a lot of people don't become, in our business, title experts. Are there any easements? Are there any uh, governing documents that affect title that could impact the value of Either you have to renew a tenant, you have a neighbor that could impact your, your property. So you have to know your surroundings. Yeah. And your title and your survey give you a real good glimpse of what your surroundings is, where your borders are, where your lines are, uh, how many parking spaces you have. The other thing that people forget, and it depends on the asset class, in medical, it's extremely important. We look for certain ratios. Mm -hmm. But you could have an industrial building. You could have a lot of different types of commercial real estate. And you need to understand your parking. Yeah. If you don't have enough parking, tenants get really irritated yeah. with it. So you have to look at that up front. And that's, again, it goes to your due diligence. The other thing that's important is ingress and egress. Yeah. How do I get in and out of the property? Right. Is it a retail property? Is it industrial and trucks have to come in? Is it 
uh, a medical property where I have patients that have to walk two blocks to get to the front door and they're in a wheelchair, what does that mean? So due diligence is extremely important. The other pitfall is, is reading the documents and making sure you have all the documents before you acquire a property, right. whether it's all your amendments, uh, is there any clauses in the leases that can impact the value? Mm -hmm. So all these things are developed over time that you learn from. And that's why in my business, they call it a marathon business. Yeah. So I'll give you an example, which is interesting. And yeah. your listeners can take this with you. I think Please it do. was priceless when someone told me. You start your career, your first third on your back. Yeah. Your second third, you're on your feet. Yeah. Okay. And then the last third, you're on your stomach. Yeah. So right now I'm on my stomach, <laughs> but I was on my back. I was on my feet. And finally I'm on my stomach. Yeah. I'm in the prime of my career. Yeah, I would agree. And it, it's just every deal you're going to learn. And if you at least hit the basics yeah. and if you could bring in resources to help you understand how to deal with the pitfalls, whether it be accountants, engineers, uh, property condition assessment engineers, uh, you name it, environmental uh, surveyors. Yeah. The more you put into an investment and really doing the homework and due diligence, it's it really helps make it an extremely profitable and secure low risk investment. I, it's what you put is what you're going to get out. It's yeah. why we manage the heck out of our properties. Yeah. Because we want to know everything going on. We want to know how our tenants are doing. We want to know what issues are out there. We want to know, are there any changes in the government? Yeah. The other pitfall, I, you know, and, and now that we're talking about this, I could wrap up this up because sure. I can get into a lineage. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's is, tons of wisdom. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. But another nugget yeah. that your listeners can take with you is go meet with the city that the property's in. Yeah. Everyone forgets to do this. Okay. Because the city plan or the guys who run the real estate department or whoever. Yeah. It could be anyone there. They have knowledge that you'll you'll never get. Yes. They know history of the property. They know issues that have come up. They're like, oh, your tenant, yeah, they're looking at building a facility. You might find out in due diligence and say, all right, well, I'm not paying for this property we're here because the tenant's leaving. Yeah. It's, it's increasing my risk. I got to pay it less. Yes. Or or I'm on a, I'm getting a loan and I'm gonna have a problem. Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to fulfill my my covenants on my loan. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's a real good exercise is to speak to the city, ask them questions, build rapport. And when you go into the city, you want to act and uh, and be grateful yeah. and, and let them know that you're there to help the community, to add value. Yeah. That's a really key phrase that people can take with. So. Those are a few of the nuggets. Oh, there's man. a lot, but there's so there's many. There's a lot of things you can use. Yeah, there's a lot. You there are a lot out there, and I can tell you that for me, it's become osmosis to know what to do and act. But yeah. it takes time. It's just it's experience, and it's okay if you don't know anything. You just have to get started. Yeah, that's the key. So uh, thank you for that. I mean, my goodness, there's there's a, a lot we could unpack there. Um, so it, it sounds. I'm just taking notes here. So it sounds like um, you know. Again, we talk a lot uh, on this podcast about the importance of reputation and relationships, and you you touched a lot on that. So I just want to, I, I kind of want to dance around this a little bit more and and really get get down on this. So as I'm listening to you, it sounds like from your experience looking back, um, you talked about. Uh, I, of course, I'm putting words in your mouth. Um, the power of and the importance of relationships, and specifically, you're saying, look, you got. You, you said shoe leather means you just hit the street. You got to start talking to people. We're going to, um, and so you're telling the listeners, look, if you're doing a deal, especially, especially real estate, talk to the banks, get to know them, build that relationship, understand how they think and how they make a decision. Then you also said, read your documents, understand what's going on. And if you don't, maybe you said you're good at bringing in other people and we can talk about your selection choices there. And then finally build that, that reputation um, as someone who wants to help the city and also those relationships with the city. And so leveraging your relationships with the banks, the city, as well as other people who can help you with the documentation and really, you know, sometimes some of these documents can be a little wordy, um, but either way, leverage those. Now, um, 
I want to I want to shift a little bit to um, you, we've been talking about a deal and this is fantastic. You mentioned earlier that um, you know working with the banks and talking to them and you you said the word capital stack and and you and I understand that for those who don't know it's just the blend between um, your investors and debt financing if there is a blend. yeah it's your it's your debt it's your debt and equity your debt and equity perfect that so, equal and that equals a word called capitalization I love it so on on your deals. Um, Talk, walk us through how on the equity side, so you're, you're piecing mm -hmm. a deal together is a phrase I use. Mm -hmm. So you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're finding the debt, you're working the bank, you're talking to the city, but a big part of that is investors. We, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our investors are the lifeblood of our business. Absolutely. We, so can we you treat them with white glove service? Oh uh, yeah, no, we can get into that. It's you guys critical. certainly it's are. Everything. Yeah. You cut above the rest. So, Walk through how you find investors, how you pitch them. How does that work when when people are doing business with um, Alliance, but really Alliance is you? It's it's your baby. You've created this thing since '94. It's an extension of everything you value. Walk walk talk about how how you find investors, how you pitch investors. And how have you grown that investor base from the 24-year-old scrappy Ben Reinberg to today? Well, when I first got started, I mean, let's start with that. Sure. I think that's really important if you're just getting started. Yeah. Uh, I hustled. Yeah. I went out and I, I put together a little package showing the numbers, explaining who I was and my background. And I put together what the preferred return was, what the waterfall structure was for the investors. Yeah. And my first deal, I had to raise over 2 million bucks. And I did in three, I was young. Yeah. And I did in a few weeks. And that was because I went out and hustled, calling, meeting people. I had to go to conference rooms. I had to ask for referrals. I yeah. did whatever I could to, uh, to obtain those investors and bring in that capital. And it was persistence. Yeah. Every deal that we raise money for, every fund, it's all about persistence. We put together a good package that stands on its own, and it's persistence. Yeah. And so you start with your first deal. You ask anyone you can. You have to be fearless when you raise equity. Yeah. And it's hard because the human mind says, well, I, I don't want to ask for money. That's kind of scary. Yeah. Or, or what are they going to say? Or are they going to think I'm desperate? Or or they're going to say, no, I went through all those feelings when I was younger. <laughs> Same. Yeah. I hated raising equity when I was younger <laughs> because I felt like I was going to get beaten up yeah. every single day oh, of yeah. the week. And, and it was tough. And you do. And you have to have thick skin. Yeah. And you have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you raise money, you have to go out there and do it. Nowadays, it's a little bit easier because uh, with the Internet, you can do different things. Yeah. So we use the Internet. And I write a blog to hundreds of thousands of people. So I have a strong brand. People know who I am. Yeah. I don't have to prove myself that I can close a deal. Yeah. But when you're younger or you're just getting start up, started out in the business, uh, you just have to go. You just have to do it. And you have to have integrity. Yeah. And you have to do your homework. If you know about the deal, all the ins and outs and why the capital is going to be secure and safe and why you're going to make money and pay your preferred return to them, it makes it a lot easier. If you don't do your homework, then an investor is going to pick you apart. Yeah. And so for us, we use high net worth credit investors. That's yeah. our investor pool. Okay. And they're very wealthy people. Yeah. So they want someone who's the expert so they don't have to invest their capital in real estate. That's mm -hmm. why you're there. That's your, that's your job. That's your purpose. Right. So you have to know about the deal and you have to hustle yeah. and you have to ask for referrals. So now you know, taking a step forward to who we are as a company, it's a lot different. We have an incredible track record. We have 200 to 250 plus years of experience on our leadership team. <laughs> and it's not a Ben Reinberg company anymore. Yeah. It's a company of my employees. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, the, they're the top dogs who run the show. Wow. Yeah, I started the company and I oversee everything. Yeah. But, you know, they're, they're part of the huge success where we're at. And so we have different departments. Awesome. And so it just, it takes time. So you do your first deal, you raise money, you're out there hustling, you ask everyone in the sun yeah. for referrals and who do you know? Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I'll give it, I'll give everyone a little trick. So in coffee, <laughs> wow, okay, please. I think is really cool. This is fun. Do it. What the, here's what I would do okay. if I were younger and I was getting started sure. is I would ask someone, let's say they're close to you. It could be family member. Well, yep. instead of asking them directly to invest in the deal, what you do is you say, who do you know that could invest in this? medical office investment that's going to pay a 6% preferred return. And we're projecting you'll double your money in five years. Yep. Who do you know that might invest? Now, if that person has the ability to invest and wants to invest, they're going to say, well, what about me? Yeah. So now all of a sudden it becomes their idea yeah, and they okay. start owning it. And then what happens is you have a great opportunity to close them as an investor. So you get them as an investor and you say, okay, say it's a million bucks. It's a small raise. So they have to raise a million bucks. Well, now all of a sudden he's, he or she's in, in the pool of investors. Then it's like, you know, we have 800,000 left to raise. Who else do you know? Yeah. And the thing is they want the deal to close. So guess what happens? They start introducing you to people and then them and, and you carry the same mantra. And then all of a sudden your pitch becomes better. Wow. That's incredible. So that's what you need to when younger. Now, as you progress, hmm. okay. And I'll, give your uh, audience a little bit, some more nuggets, how I look at things. Please do. And I started doing this about 20 years ago is uh, when I sell a deal or a fund or whatever, my director investor relations, we treat it like what I call the Birkin bag. So okay. Birkin bag is by Hermes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's women's fashion. Yeah. And I knew nothing about this. <laughs> I learned about Birkin bags. Cause one of my investors, I walked in her closet one day, she had 25 they're about 50, 60 grand a piece. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So I was blown away. Yeah. I said, what are these? And so she said, they're Birkin bags and they're all custom and they're, they're exclusive yeah. and high barriers entry to get one yeah. and they take time. I said, oh, and I started thinking, I took a step back. I said, it's kind of like our real estate deals. Yeah. So ever since then, my mindset is we're selling a Birkin bag yeah. and it becomes a privilege. And I would say to your investors, there is a guy that I've never met. And uh, I'm sure he'll be on our podcast sooner or later. But there's a guy named Warren Claff who wrote a book called Pitch Anyway. Yep. And it's a great book to read. The reason why is he does a lot of the same things we do. Yeah. And he goes even deeper, which I love. Yeah. I loved his book. Yeah, it's a great book. And I would read it every single quarter of the rest of my life because I just love learning. <laughs> there's so many nuggets I learn when I reread a few things from there. Yeah. And it's a similar mindset is you create the frame. You, it's a privilege to invest in your deal. Yeah. And that's my mindset. And that mindset carries over. Right. The other thing that's really important when you're raising money is what's the end goal? So, for example, you ran your numbers, you put together your investment summary, your PPM, and you know your capital stack. So you say, okay, I'm going to raise $4 million. So you know at the end game it's $4 million. Right. So then you back up, you say, well, how do I get there? Right. Okay. Uh, what are my minimums? Is it $50,000? Okay. How many investors, worst case scenario, how many investors is that for 4 million? Uh, what can I do? And then you start hustling. Yeah. And when you start getting your first 500, your first million, your first 2 million, you have momentum. Yeah. And you could ask for referrals from the existing investors. You can leverage off other relationships you have. The other thing I suggest is the people that are helping you in the deals, your resources, your engineers. Sometimes they want to invest in deals. Sometimes the brokers that are selling you the deal. They want to invest in deals because no one asks them. Yeah. And we have some brokers. We have what's, I think, the best testament to and testimonial to what we do is we have a lot of our brokers and tenants that invest in our funds and our deals, which I think is really cool. Is that right? Because I, I ask them or they ask me and they say, hey, can, and all this is networking. Yeah. It's all, it's all, it's all preaching to them yeah. what you do and feeling proud of it. Yeah. So those are some of the tricks, but at the end of the day, there's a foundation behind all that. Yeah. And it's really loving yourself, believing in yourself and having confidence. Yeah. And that really, what is the baseline of why I'm able to, to raise equity? Yeah. I've been doing it for a long time, but when you're younger, yeah. if you can work on yourself and become the best version of yourself, you'll be incredible at raising equity. Perfect. And I, I, I would, I would have prayed to God if yeah. someone would have taught me that when I was younger, said that to me. So for all your listeners out there that are young yeah. or want to do this, 
become the best version of yourself, work on yourself. And, and I'm no different. Yeah. Every day, every week I do personal development. Yeah. I take classes. Uh, I work on myself. I have different mentors that help me. And that is a real big asset to raising money. And no one talks about it. No one talks about like all the things that go through your head and your mind and the negative thoughts and the people doubting you. Yeah. And that's your mindset. That's, that's your mind and body connection. And you're going to go through people that tell you you can't do it yeah. or you're oh, going to yeah. fail yep. or you'll never get a loan or you're not good enough. You'll hear all that, yep. especially when you're younger yep. and it's tough. Yeah. And so you have to develop that thick skin. You have to have a good mindset. You have to believe in yourself yeah. and you have to be persistent. And that's really the foundation of raising equity and in, in doing deals in our business. Yeah. It's the same thing. When we go after looking for deals, the brokers and the sellers, they want to deal with people that can close, that have confidence, that know what they're doing. Yeah. And that has to deal with how I, how me and my staff, how we deal with others out there in the public. Right. And it's, you have to, you have to work on yourself. Yeah. You have to be the best version. And I, that's what I would tell my, so, you know, one of the things someone asked me the other day, I think I told you this before is that what would a, I'm 52 years old. What would a 52 year old Ben Reimer tell his 25 year old self? Yeah. And it was a great question. And I loved it because it helped me reflect. I was like, wow, I really had to think about it. <laughs> I would love to know. Like, yeah. There was a lot of, an- a lot of answers I wanted to get, but I'm like, <laughs> okay, what? And I would tell myself personal development. Yeah. Work on yourself. If I knew that when I was younger, oh my God, I couldn't imagine where my career would be. Yeah. And, and what, how much impact I would make. And so that's really important. The other thing I think is really important when you're raising equity Mm -hmm. and someone told me this years ago and I never forgot it. They said, be interested, not interesting. Hmm. And explain that a little bit. Well, it, it really means to take time to give a shit about people. Yeah. That's really the bottom line. That's what it means. And I'll get a lot of my investors know who I am. Yeah. Uh, they know I have three kids, uh, they know my experience and everything else. But at the end of the day, like they might not even know that I work out with the trainer all the time, every week. Sure. They might not know all the traveling I do. And the reason behind that is because I don't lead with me. Yeah. I lead with them. Mm. Tell me, tell me what's going on. What's your situation right now? Yeah. How are your kids doing? How was the baseball game you just coached? How's your wife doing? I heard she wasn't feeling well. Yeah. Or, or hey, you used to trade bonds. Can you tell me something about it? how did it work? Like, how, and I really dig into that, and they start talking about themselves. Yeah. And everyone loves to talk about themselves. Yeah. So I figured I'm going to flip the switch. I'm going to let them talk about themselves. Yeah. And guess what ends up happening? I build rapport. I love that. So I end up building rapport with them, and guess what? They end up investing. And once they invest and they come into an alliance deal, they don't leave. And they give referrals. Yeah. And so that's just a little thing to take time to care about people goes a long way. And if you take a selfish attitude in our business and especially raising equity, you'll lose. You will absolutely lose. I teach this all the time to people and they come back and they thank me and they say, thank you. Because what's happening is someone's talking and you're not listening to them and you're not giving a shit about them. Yeah. And when you, and, and, they and know. that energy, that energy comes off, yeah. it just does. And I found that if you take time to care about people and you listen and you can even reflect it back to them, what you heard, that's how you build rapport. And when you build rapport, it becomes really easy. You know, the other thing is work on your communication, understand how does the other person communicate? Mm. You know, do they like to feel what you're talking about? Do they like to see it? Yeah. Do they like to hear it? Yes. Or, or do they need to know, like, what's my process? You know, are they audio digital? Yes. Like what's my process? So if you understand how the person communicates, you can communicate your pitch in the most effective way. And so for example, if you take me, for example, sure. Okay. I'm an audio visual guy. I love when people show me like on a Zoom call, they'll show me the slides, they'll yeah. show me the risk. Because I invest outside of real estate. I invest in companies and different things. And, oh, I didn't know and that. So I like to see 
I like someone to frame it for me and show me and mm-hmm. say, here's exactly what you're investing. This is when we're going to exit. This is what we're projected. By the way, here's our market. And they're showing me on the screen. The other thing is I'm, I'm audio too. So yeah. I want to listen to what they're saying. Right. Now, I know other people where even like some of my kids, they, they look at things differently. They're audio digital. They want to know like, all right, dad, where's the start and where are we finishing and what are we doing in between? Right. Okay, great. Well, that's how I'm going to communicate with you. Right. So I learn about everyone's communicating styles I'm dealing with. Wow. And that also builds rapport. It does. So building rapport is so critical. And it has to do with taking time to care, listening, understanding how they communicate and communicating properly with them. And if you do all that, I will assure you, you will have success if you're persistent. That's incredible. And that's, and, and, and here's what ends up happening when you do that, mm. your confidence builds Yeah, because you're building rapport. Yeah. And what the most beautiful thing about my business that I love is the people that I meet. Yeah. Cause everyone, every, including us, yeah. we all have like different stories, different experiences, <laughs> yeah. different relationships, different resources. It's amazing. If you're, if you're grateful for the people you meet, yeah, it's abundance that comes back. It is just, it's like a waterfall. It's amazing. Yeah. And what I tell my staff, and I want your listeners to hear this because I think it's really important yeah. if you're Rob raising money. Yeah. And I, and I say this to everyone, I say this to people that work for me and I'm, and I'm going to say it to everyone on that's, that's listening is that every penny you raise, never forget how difficult it is for that person to earn that penny. Yeah. And don't forget that concept because the moment you forget that, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be raising money or be a fiduciary for their money. Yeah. Because you have to be grateful and appreciate. Think about the person that, you know, spent 30 years and he's investing a hundred thousand dollars with you. Yeah. And he's diversified and he's believing in you. And you want to be grateful and appreciate. Yeah. And if you take that attitude and that mindset and that's what you're projecting, yeah. guess what? People value that. Wow, that's incredible. And the human mind is so interesting mm-hmm. because when you raise money, you're really dealing with human nature. Right. It's a lot of psychology. Everyone can, everyone can pay you a preferred return. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But it's the rapport you build and everything else you do. And I, what I would encourage your younger folks that are listening or people that are getting started yeah. is become an expert, become a problem solver. Yeah. That's why investment, when people say to me, well, who do you invest in? You know, do you invest in other sponsors and other deals and hedge funds? I do all that. Yeah. And my number one question I ask is, how do you solve problems? Because I'm betting on the horse that could solve a problem. That's what I want. I want, I want to know, because anyone can pay me a quarterly return, right? But I know in life, things happen. Things come out of the blue that are unexpected. We have a pandemic. We're in a war. We have a terrorism event, uh, interest rates spike, you name it happens. Okay. Just something out of the blue that you would never think of. You know, there's a, there's a earthquake or a flood or whatever might impact your deal. Yeah. So then it's like, well, how do you, how do you solve it? How do you solve a vacancy at one of your your properties? Mm -hmm. So I want the person that can solve problems. That's going to grind to protect me. And that person will always win. And that's who we are at Alliance. I mean, we are phenomenal at solving problems. Now, we've been doing this a long time, and we've developed that culture and that art to do that and that confidence. But over time, build that up. Become an expert. Read. Ask questions. Take lots of notes. Uh, I'm a big note taker. Yeah, I'm taking notes as we speak. Yeah, and I encourage your audience, anyone that's younger. Yeah. Okay, whether you work for someone, you have your own business, encourage everyone to write it down yeah. so you, you can't remember people are like oh well, i'm gonna type it when you write it handwritten yep. it becomes sunk in you there's something about and it so my employees laugh at me i'll have like years and years of yellow notepads <laughs> and they're like are you gonna get rid of them ever and i'm i'm attached to them because yeah. i'll i'll start going oh yeah from uh from 2008 you know this happened yeah. and this is what we did and so i reference it yeah. and but I encourage you, if you write things down, yeah. okay, you'll learn faster. Yep. Uh, people appreciate it. People appreciate that you remember what they said. Yeah. 
So there's a lot of benefits to doing that. Yep. And a lot of people forget to do that. Yeah. And I think if you always have a notepad or paper, a pen at your hip, yeah. for whatever reason, during your work day or even outside work day, throw it in your pocket yeah. when you have to. You just never know. Yep. You just and raising equity is a fluid thing. Yeah. And another tip I can give your audience sure. is when you're live in a deal and you're raising equity, yep. don't stop. Yeah. Yeah, I understand you might have a significant R and kids. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand. But you have to be focused. Yeah. And that means you might be raising money over a weekend. Yep. You might be at night. Sometimes you have to time it like, okay. I have doctors that are investors. I might have to call them at night. I might have to call them early in the morning. Yeah. It might be lunch. Yep. But one of the benefits that the younger generation or people getting started in raising equity in this business is these calls, these Zooms, yeah. these Microsoft Teams calls that we do at my office. They are so powerful. Yeah. And the fact that we can talk on video mm -hmm. and express ourselves and under and see our, our physiology yeah. of how someone responding to what you're preaching to them. Am I wasting my time? Am I making my time efficient? Wow. So there's tremendous, it's a tremendous asset to do video calls. I encourage everyone, any investor you can to get on a video, you have a higher probability of closing them. I and love that's it. a fact. So, and we're doing that frequently. I, I just absolutely love that was one, you know, we had video calls before the pandemic, but after the pandemic, it just became more comfortable. Yeah, standard operating procedure now. So yeah, it's amazing. I want to, I want to thank you. I mean, the, my goodness, that is a deep well of, uh, of knowledge. Now you sound, oh, I, I, I could give you thousands. I <laughs> I'm mean, sure you could, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to overwhelm anyone. Yeah. We got to have you on you know, a couple, a uh, couple of, uh, yeah, episodes. we can get into a lot of deep dives <laughs> on a lot of things, but I, I'm very passionate about what I do I in can raising tell. money. And, and I love, I love the ability to teach and help people that are getting started. I can tell. I know I never had that opportunity. Yeah. And uh, I think it's great if someone can accelerate their learning curve. Yeah. So, Ben, I can tell uh, just from listening to you that um, your, your heart's in the right place. You're a very compassionate man. You mentioned gratitude. You mentioned, you know, actually caring about caring about the person on the other side, meaning the investor you're pitching. Um, and you mentioned a lot of things about be interesting, uh, be interested, not interesting. Um, you know, earlier in, in one of the episodes, this is, I'm drawing parallels myself. So also with the audience and, and my experience is quite similar, but also quite different. Um, but in this regard, when talking with people um, and, and pitching and, and raising capital, it's not just like, I don't know, I show them a slide deck and then they cut me a check. Isn't that how it works? Of course not. But the people like yourself who've been able to grow a fund of investments north of $500 million. Now, we, I, we talk about how uh, in a previous episode, I played the long game and I learned the three disciplines. And it sounds like you didn't use these words, but um, the three disciplines in the long game when I got started in this industry um, a few years ago was um, never eat alone. These are the three disciplines that I had as I raised capital. I, I promised myself I was committed. Number one, never eat alone. Number two, always ask people about their story. And number three, be generous. Those were my three disciplines in raising capital. And you, you, I'm, I'm hearing your experience of drawing it to mine. I was like, yeah, like this guy was always asking people about his story. He was always out there meeting with people. He was very generous and like gave them that um, white glove service. And people began to trust you and your company started to grow as you're raising capital. Now, one of the things that I'd like to touch on, um, just really brief, um, you, you mentioned you're really good at bringing in the right people, resources. Um, you know, it reminds me of one of the uh, one of my favorite books is called Who Not How. But, um, Benjamin Hardy, I think his name was Dr. Hardy. Um, and. In there, they talked about how you can expand your wealth in your life. Uh, it, it was a great theory on on figuring out instead of how do I get this done, you're you're you sound like more of a who not how guy, which says I don't go into the what, but I actually go into the who, and I'm really good at finding who I need to put a deal together. Can you walk me through just really briefly for our listeners? Um, as you're putting together deals, you're building your own uh, empire, you know, word I use, not you. 
how have you decided, what do you look for when selecting who's going to help you on your team? It's a, it's a great question. And I spent years developing a great platform and a great team around me. Yeah. And you have to, you go through a bunch of people yeah. and you have to be able to cut the cord quickly too. Okay. And that's a tough thing to do for people Yeah, is to say next, yeah. you know what, this resource isn't working out next. That could be an attorney. That could be accountants. That could be anyone you do business with brokers, selling a property, what have you. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing I do is I ask the what I say, what am I trying to accomplish here? Yeah. So you get a heading a specific deal yep. fun. What am I trying to accomplish? Then I back up and I say, well, who can help me accomplish the what? Yeah. So years ago, what I did was when I was smaller and born and raised in Chicago, I knew the downtown law firms were going to be more expensive than lawyers in the suburbs. Yeah. So I said, okay, well, let me find different attorneys to work. And I had to learn that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I had, I had a downtown room. They were expensive. I saw the bill and I said, man, this is really cool in the capital stack. I got to make a change. Sure. So that was a learning experience. It's all learning. Yeah. And for you, and then finally I found the attorney that I love and he's been with me for two and a half decades. Wow. He's like an older brother to me and we've done so many deals and mm -hmm. we talk every day and it's a, it's a wonderful relationship and that's the goal. So what's important in your relationships? One is, you need someone that knows how to communicate. Yeah. You need someone that's accountable. Yep. You need someone that's going to call you back and communicate with you. Yeah. And you need that comfort level. You need that. There has to be a little bit of that friendship yeah. in your relationships. And that way it becomes personal and you get to know them and their family. You spend time with them. You go out dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatever is your forte. Yeah. Uh, you might go to a sporting event with them. You get to know them. You build a relationship. Right. And what happens is some of these resources that you bring in, they introduce you to investors. Just like our accountants, our accountants have brought in a lot of investors because yeah. they like what we do. Yeah. And they see the returns and they're doing the tax returns and all the accounting. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So I would say to your listeners is find someone that you, I'll use the term vibe with. Yeah. Find your vibe, find someone you vibe with, find someone that you're comfortable with, find someone that's going to communicate with you, find someone that's going to teach you if you don't know and yeah. respect that, hey, I'm at this point in my career, I'm getting here and I need some help. And your attitude and mindset and that hard work and persistence, your third party resources will gravitate to that. I love that. And I am a money making machine for my third party resources. Yeah. They love me because I pay them a lot of money. Yeah. So when you're getting started yeah. and you're and you're and you're working towards that, find the people that you want long term relationships. Tell them that you want long term relationships. Yeah. Find the right accountants, find the right attorneys for this business in buying real estate. Yeah. Accountants and attorneys are everything. Yes. They're huge. Yep. And then ask you know, when you have lenders that you get involved, let's say you find a lender, ask who they use for third party reports. Who mm. do you use for your environmental yeah. consulting? Who do you use for your property condition? Who has other borrowers use? Ask other people in the business or well, here's a secret I'll, I'll give out. Sure. Okay, I've never given this out in public, but I'm going to give it out on your show. All right. Okay? Thank you. So everyone, everyone listen. Up <laughs> Buckle up. Yep. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Find real estate attorneys and my business is a commercial real estate attorney. Yeah. And I asked them who's out there lending. That's how you find lenders. Uh, who's out there financing this. And sometimes I even run into a that. lot of lenders, what we call lender legals, where these attorneys are writing the loan docs for these banks Yeah, and you find who they are. And then you find out, well, who else do you represent? Oh, well, we're doing a deal. You're going to get the legal work when we do this deal. Who's the banks you work with? Yeah. Go call Joe or Susan or whoever at boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And then I call them and I say, Joe, it's Ben Reinberg. Okay. Uh, Steve Smith introduced me to you. Uh, he said, you're great. Here we are. We're from Chicago. We're investing in the Las Vegas, Nevada market. Yep. We have a lot of capital. We're trying to get on the street. I was wondering if you'd be interested in getting a loan. And by the way, I plan on putting deposits in your bank through our property and we're growing in this region. So we're going to give you more deposits. 
Oh, so now wow. all of a sudden I open the door like, really? All right, let's start. What do you want? Yes. And now all of a sudden I get, now let's roll back. Remember what I said earlier, I start framing, I start interviewing and it all leads to that. Man. So if you want good lenders, talk to the attorneys. Okay. Secret sauce. They know. Right from That me. is a secret. Right From By the, the way, man. I'm not going to charge anyone for that. <laughs> but if you become wealthy and famous, yeah. just say, look, this guy, Ben Reimberg, I heard on a podcast is just spectacular and and no i'm just yeah you you accept i want to help people (laughs) and but that's something if you're trying to understand like how do i finance a deal yeah that is to me the the juice that not a lot of people squeeze no one like picks and i would pick up the phone i would go on google i would start googling if i was buying a deal say like in austin texas i'd google and say who are the attorneys yeah then look at their website this is why the internet's so great i'd look at a website say oh these guys look like they have a big commercial real estate department. Yeah. I'd start calling the partners. Yeah. And I'd be like, uh, hey, Bridget, it's Ben Reinberg. Yeah. I see you do a lot of deals. I was really impressed. Uh, I'm getting this market. I might need some legal help yep. and might be able to hire you or use you for your property tax mitigation or whatever might be the case. Could you help me? When you lay yourself on the table and you're vulnerable yeah. and you need help, people will help you. I love that. That's another secret someone taught me too. I could offer to them is that you don't have to know everything. Yeah, and it, there's no shame in telling people you don't know something. So, if you have an issue or a challenge or don't know how to do something, when you lay it on the table, mm-hmm. you know we used to have a conference room. So I always say like the conference room table. When you lay it on the conference room table, someone will pick it up and help you. Yeah, that's how the mind works. That's human nature, and that's why when you're vulnerable and you're interested and not interesting. All these things tie together. I love that. And that's why I reflect back and I say, work on yourself. Mm-hmm. Because when you work on yourself, all this stuff becomes natural and you actually start doing it. That's And so if that really helps you raise money and put together your capital stack, we just talked about equity. We just talked about debt and how to find lenders. Well, there you go. There's, there's your answer. Yeah. I mean, and if any of your listeners out there are superstars, I'd love to hear from them because, uh, I love helping people and I love to hear how they do it. Yeah. And I can learn from them. And uh, well, I think it's really, I think it's cool to raise that way. I'm, uh, I'm jealous. I, I wish I was 24 again with all the resources out there with the world that, and all the people and how knowledgeable they are yeah. and sharing. So. so we'll include, uh, you know, it's up to you uh, some way if you wanted to hear from people, uh, maybe we can include either your LinkedIn profile and in, in the description below, um, just help people to reach out to you as well. So one final question I have for you, and I've asked this before, mm-hmm. if you couldn't leave any of your money to your kids, but you can only leave the advice on how to make it and how to achieve whatever it is you've achieved. What advice would you give to your loved ones in place of your money when you die? Well, let's just make a claim. I'm not giving any of my money to my kids. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I would, I would tell my kids or anyone that, Become the best version of yourself. Yeah. Become the expert in whatever you want to do. The other thing is live in your highest values. Find out who you are. Yeah. Okay. So for me, if anyone knows me, I I, I love business. Yeah. I am I'm a health nut. I work out and I eat healthy. I take care of my body. I believe it has a tremendous benefit and impact on my success. I agree. And um, and my other thing is personal development. I work on myself. That's me. Yeah. Some people are family people and spiritual and have all different types of values. Find what your highest values are and live on, live in them every day. That's what I would tell my kids. And I'll also tell them to become expert in whatever they're passionate about. And don't be afraid to fail. Yeah. Don't be afraid to try something. If you fail, there's no shame in failing. Because most people don't want to don't want to try something. Yeah, and ask questions, put yourself out there, and that's what I would tell my kids. That's what I would tell anyone that wants to do this or get started in business or become successful or grow as a person. I'm... And those are just there's so many things, but but working on yourself and uh, and becoming an expert is is just a tremendous 
you know, the thing is, someone said to me, he's like, well, you can do a lot of deals and everything. I said, but when you have the knowledge and you're an expert, money just comes to you. Yeah. You become that money magnet. Yeah. It's your and reputation. That's a, People know you no as a question. pro. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and you have to, you know, if you're going to go work for someone and I tell this to my kids is you want to be grateful yeah. for what you have yeah. and have gratitude and you want to be the first one to show up, the last one to leave, yeah. put in effort. You don't have to be the most knowledgeable. What employers like, like me, okay, and I've been an employer for a long, long time, yeah. is I love people where I can turn my back and they're gold. Yeah. And so how do you become that person because you're dependable, you care. You have integrity. You're interested, not interesting. Yep. You have integrity. Yep. I mean, there's, there's a lot of foundation in that. And that has to stem a lot from personal development. Yeah. And so I would tell my kids, work on yourselves, be the best version you can, become the expert you're in, and you will have tremendous success. Well, and that, to me, is is the key to success and, and what it really means. Well, that that is certainly, um, I mean, there are so many golden nuggets that we can unpack. Um, I'm going to be listening to this podcast multiple times just for my own benefit. You've been so wonderful to share, and you've been very generous. And, uh, you know, so to our audience, as, as, as we wrap things up with, with Ben Reinberg, um, you focus on your health, live by values, be values driven, become an expert at something, have no fear and failing, ask questions and put yourself out there in your pursuit of making billions. Well, that's enough for me, everybody. Thank you so much, Ben Reinberg. Uh, we look forward to bringing you on uh, again in the future. Absolutely. And if anyone wants to uh, follow me, uh, take Instagram or Twitter at the real Ben Reinberg. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free to do so. We write a lot of great content that add values, especially if you're in our business or any business yeah. and you're raising money or doing deals in any spectrum. So I love it. Feel free to follow me, and uh, we'll continue to offer you value. Yeah, we'll put we'll put the links uh, if people want to reach out to you and connect with you. We'll put those in the description below. Um, and uh, yeah, we look forward to to learning uh, many more lessons from from you, great. from Ben Reinberg. Yeah, I look forward to coming back on and. Uh, we can get we can do a deep dive on other topics. I, I love it. We got a lot to talk about. All right, then. Until then. Thanks, brother. Okay. Bye now.